Welcome to Speak of the Devil. I'm Reverend Campbell, and I've got a really interesting show for you today. We're being joined by the very beautiful Miss Heidi Knights. How are you, my dear? I'm wonderful. How are you? Very good, and I'm excited about our topic. We're going to be talking about fetish films. Appropriately enough, you're joining us here on the show. And uh, I want to give a quick shout out to the individuals in the chat room before we dive in. Thank you guys so much for joining us live. Zoth, good to see you, my man. Ben, Gary, Lolly, good to see you. MJ, happy birthday. And uh, Bernice happy Records. Birthday. Bernice Records. <laughs> it's so good, they named it twice. <laughs> if you guys have questions during the course of this discussion, feel free to jump in, post them up there, talk amongst yourselves. How's it going, Race? All right. Hiding fetish fetish films now you are a performer uh, uh -huh. and i want to talk about that but first i want to sort of set the stage here for the audience who may not be uh in the know about fetish culture even what fetishes are uh so let's go ahead and start from the very beginning and just touch on what is a fetish well a fetish in the uh like rawest form of it is something that someone cannot finish sexually without like some people need that whatever their given fetish is yeah. in order to essentially get off but it over time it's kind of been like smoothed out to mean any little proclivity that one might have like a thing for you know Mm -hmm. But really what it is, you know, essentially is something that someone needs in order to achieve climax. Yeah, and it's wild because it, it I think typically people, okay, this is my one-sided view of the world here. I think people <laughs> categorize fetish very narrowly, and I think it, probably it's, it's much broader than the majority of people recognize it as. Um, so... You know, I, I think the most common ones are like feet and uh, smoking and spanking and, you know, stuff like that where it's very specific, very focused, narrow. Um, what do you think some of the more common uh, things are that people would still consider? Well, that would fit the definition of fetish that maybe people don't consider a fetish. Jeez. Um, there just about anything... Like, you know, uniforms. Women are always, yeah. you know, well, women love, love men in uniforms. But there's also, like, that extra, like, you know, I gotta have a guy in uniform. <laughs> you know? <laughs> there's not me personally, but, you know. Oh, I was about to get my <laughs> old army uh, uniform on. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be very hot. And that's the, the difference is, like, there's things that, like, I'm, I might see like you in a uniform and be like hmm that's kind of hot but i wouldn't consider it personally to be a fetish yeah. you know yeah. i think that uh like one that you didn't you didn't uh mention was uh scent scent is a huge thing with a lot of people like right. panty sniffing and you know even like feet mm. underarms that's like a kind of a big deal in the fetish oh. world where you know you could sell your dirty shoes and underwear and stuff online so people like used pantyhose. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's that's one that uh, uh, every, I think most people would consider a fetish, but one that you didn't mention specifically. Yeah. The I... thing that I, I think um, that interests me about fetishes, like from a psychological standpoint, mm -hmm. um, if I'm not skipping ahead. No, no. If I bring... Okay. <laughs> Is that uh, 
I, I've done, I, when I used to host my own show, I did an interview with a guy. He's, he's a local guy. He calls himself carpet <laughs> and he comes to a lot of the shows and he just rolls himself up on a carpet and you step on him. <laughs> and, uh, and that's his thing. But when I interviewed him, he said that the, that the fetish started when he was a kid and he would lay down, I think he lived on a farm and there was a lot of cats hmm. and the cats would just lay on him and it wasn't sexual in any way. It was just, he liked the pressure wow. of all the cats laying on him, you know, and cats would be just dead weight on you. And that's <laughs> the same thing with, um, like for me, I have a spanking fetish, hmm. but it didn't start off with anything sexual for some reason like it started off with cartoons there's so much spanking tom and jerry cartoons yeah. and stuff wow like, but for yeah reason, yeah <laughs> and and uh books the the lonely little doll is a big one for spankos and wow. and uh it's not sexual at all it didn't feel sexual as a kid but for some reason translates to that it, as an adult, it's, it has something to do with like triggering something in your brain in childhood with almost everybody that I've spoken to who has some kind of fetish. Wow. Um, Lorcan has a question here. I think you might have answered it just now, but I want to give you another shot at it. Um, I want to dive into this psychological side of it right after this, though. So Lorcan asks, Heidi, what's the strangest fetish you've come across? The strangest. The strangest fetish. Honestly, and people, I feel like this is a disappointing answer, but this is the one that blew me away the most was the smoking fetish. Oh, really? Because, because it literally is just smoking. Yeah. There, there doesn't have to be any nudity. The girl doesn't even have to be dressed up. Maybe not even necessarily like incredibly hot. It's just men who love to watch women smoke cigarettes. And there's the um, the odd part of that is I had a, a request for a custom video once, and the guy wanted a smoking video with where the girl had a a really bad morning smoking cough, like a smoker's cough. Yeah. <laughs> he literally wanted me to wake up first thing in the morning and light a cigarette and be coughing. <laughs> Just and hack pain. a lung. And but I ended up not doing it because in order to, to orchestrate that, he wanted it to be genuine. Yeah. So he wanted me to have a cameraman sitting by my bedside as I woke up in the morning. Wake up. Yes. Yeah. Time. <laughs> Light up a cigarette and start hacking. And then he was asking me for like he was asking if I could record some audio of my smoker's cough wow. <laughs> and send it to him. So that turned out to be. Um, that's kind of a, a sad part of trying to make money with this. <laughs> that men will try to get you, engage you and jerk off for free. <laughs> like, yeah. And so sending him audio of my smoker's cough, which frankly doesn't really exist, <laughs> like was kind of going too far. Obviously he was wow. looking for a free ride, you know, <laughs> but that's, that, that's an expensive video. Yeah. Hire that would be, a, that would be a weird one. Cause I always thought yeah. of smoking ones as, like still pictures of like you know artful you know women all done up and like pinup style or something and smoke trailing off in black and white like i dig that yeah but like waking up to like a morning hack that's a little <laughs> phlegm coming out of the hat. I, have, I have one from when i had the side of my head shaved that yeah. we did in black and white and i'm sitting on our steps and i just look like it looks like i'm an angry german woman mm -hmm. like and i'm just smoking and and expressionless in it and it smells very well <laughs> wow i i dig that I, I love the photography of it i don't know if it would be a fetish though. and this is where i want to get into the psychological side of this because uh you mentioned the sort of the origins of your spanking fetish uh well loosely anyway um we talked about uh um uh, the idea of, of people are triggered like uh, the carpet guy with just cats being laid on him completely non-sexual yeah but just these events in your life so would you would you def because because they stem from personal experience has no basis in culture society would you call fetishes abnormal no i 
I don't think that something could be abnormal if it's readily experienced by humans yeah. <laughs> all over the world. So it's obviously part of our, our psychological makeup to develop these, these uh, you know, little fixations on things. What is it called? Uh, Autoerotic crystallization? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> things that turn you on. Things, that, you know. So I, I guess it's, I wouldn't call them abnormal at all because abnormal would indicate that it was rare somehow. Yeah. Well, um, let me give a shout out. HN Productions. Hey, I know you. <laughs> uh, Witch Cult. Good to see you, my dear. Uh, Joel Grease. You know what? Witch Cult. I assumed you were a girl. If you're not, sorry about that. Um, Maybe as a fetish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This one made me uh, kind of chuckle. Dawood Charlton uh, shouted out, I like turtles. <laughs> Whatever gets you Gotta off, have man. one in the chat room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeff says, uh, hello, how's it going, man? Uh, Steve, good to see ya. Evil Monkey, <laughs> how's it going, man? William, good to see ya. And uh, Michael, hello, hello. All right, so um, fetish culture, uh, virtually anything. Okay, well, hold on a second. So we, we started this defining fetish as something you need to get off. Uh, you yeah. need in order to climax. The carpet guy wasn't climaxing, was he? Not so, as far as I know. Yeah, so I mean, he's rolled up in a smelly carpet, so... Maybe he was smelly because he was... <laughs> well, he's definitely smelly because he rolls up in his carpet. <laughs> That's the interesting thing, too, because a lot of times there's an overlap between what is comforting and what is arousing. Yeah. You know? The, the spanking fetish... Um, and I've seen this across the board, like indicated by what kind of films are made and like what kind of stories are written that the, um, the regimentation of spanking and, and the, the, um, consequences, there's like this, this, like, um, this comfort in knowing what's coming. Mm -hmm. So there's like a crossover between like, this arouses me and this comforts me. And I think that that, um, especially with that, that compression, you know, guy that likes to be stepped on in the carpet, I think that's a big thing for him. I mean, maybe he goes home and jerks off right. about it later, or maybe he's climaxing in that freaking carpet on the barroom floor, <laughs> but how would we know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So is his, I got to know this, is his head covered too? Yeah, you he's can't just like see a, like a taquito, like laying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> He's very much like a taquito. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Uh, and as much as as open minded as I try to be about things, uh, open minded, I some fetishes just I don't get it. Like for example, uh, I think the weirdest one I would have ever heard of and had the unfortunate uh, experience of seeing is heels crushing a testicle. Yeah, I don't <sighs> really like CBT. I'm not really into... Uh, what is it? It's probably what? Huh? You said CBT? CBT, cog and ball torture. Oh, okay. Sorry. I um, No, don't be sorry. <laughs> I. It's probably why I don't ever really want to work in a dungeon. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of guys are looking for that. I did have like one guy who wanted me to, to burn my initials into his testicles with a cigarette. And that never came to pass, thank Whoa. goodness, because that's just gross but he was i liked him a lot and i would have done it for him <laughs> but it's not my thing i don't like cause i when i worked for i used to work for another dom and um she did horrible things to penises <laughs> that oh, i just man. i still don't, don't understand like like uh caning you know what caning is just when you smack someone with a cane yeah well she's a cane guy's dicks Oh no! And oh. Show me pictures with like blood blisters on oh, penises. Be hell. like, is that cool? And I'd be like, no, Isn't that that's cool? horrible. <laughs> so that's just not my thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. I'll spank ass bloody. I'll, I'm okay with that, but I'm not into tormenting genitals at all. <laughs> uh, do you think there's a ritual aspect of it, like the the setup, the preparation, the anticipation, the action, and the release? Absolutely. And, and again, I have to reference the spanking fetish because it's the one I'm most familiar with. But the, um, 
Now, if this would apply, I'm sorry if you could hear the garbage man outside. Oh, yeah. It's almost like I'm on the streets room. <laughs> but um, the there's a um, there's a an ascension of events that most spankophiles want to see happen. They want to see over the knee being spanked over the jeans, and then like being spanked with an implement over the jeans, and then the jeans come down, but over the underwear. And the jean, then the underwear come down, and you know, like there's like a whole sequence of events wow. that make for like a perfect spanking, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's it's all about that ascension, you know. Um, like if I'm watching it, my favorite part is when the panties get pulled down. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a fan of the uh, panties being pulled down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, there was a good question. I'm trying to find it here. Um, Lolly's asking, is it always physically sexual? I find mental masturbation excites my mind, not necessarily the body. My mind is the best sex organ. What do you think about that? I think that um, fetish in particular is is almost all mental. You know, mm-hmm. it's even when you um, even when you participate, if you like to be chained up and and you know force orgasm or whatever. You also generally like to think about it and watch it as well and um i watched or i read a short story one time where it was nothing but the guy sitting in a chair and the girl standing up next to him waiting to get spanked but instead of spanking her he talks to her and describes what's going to happen like in detail yeah and she it drives her crazy. She gets so aroused just by listening to him describe it. So it's super mental, you know. It's super um, like mentally arousing. Yeah. Yeah, and I know. I mean, just I know. You know, stereotypically, guys are supposed to be all just physical and and you know being able to to see and touch and stuff. But I find the mental aspect of it during sex is just as important as the sight or the tactile part of it sure and there's also the element of being pushed outside of your boundaries and boundaries are mental in general you know even if it's a physical boundary you still have to mentally be prepared for that and the, the excitement that comes from being pushed into like you know respectfully and consensually pushed into a situation that's a little bit outside of your comfort zone is super arousing yeah. so and that's all very in your head you know it's not ju- and if it's it's just not as much fun if it's just a physical sensation so frank is asking an interesting question here i mean we we're we're sort of touching on two different things i think we're we're talking about fetish primarily but then we're also sort of talking about domination a little bit i think frank's question is coming from the domination side of it but let's try to apply it to fetish if it is if we're able to at all he just says what about boundaries um is there such a thing as boundaries with fetishes absolutely i think that it's important for it to be okay for there to be boundaries as a matter of fact because and a lot of um, the fetish that I'm involved in, you know, not smoking or scent or anything like that, but stuff that involves um, one person spanking another person or chaining somebody up or, you know, like it, there's an element of being forced. There's when, when you are in a, sub, a submissive situation, there's a little bit of wanting to give over your power to somebody else mm-hmm. and a little bit of wanting to um, be uh, like even almost taken advantage of. And then you, but if you get too caught up in that, then you start to like um, be afraid to say that oh, I can't do that, you know, yeah. or you're afraid that there's um, that if you say something, you're going to break the mood. Yeah. But then if you're sitting there in misery because you're doing something <laughs> that you don't really, you're not comfortable with, then it, it it goes over the line, you know, and then you're really playing some, you know, head games with yourself if you do that. Like it might get to, then you're crossing over into like 
developing PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> kind yeah. of be responsible for that because you know. So it's important to have like they have um like rather than just a safe word, there's like yellow words like and I don't mean, you know, golden showers, but yeah. like words that are like in between, like just to back off a little bit, but don't stop. You know, yeah. like a, a, a safe word is generally like, okay, we're gonna stop. Yeah, we're done here. You know? But there should be it's it a simmer down word. Yeah, there's a simmer down now <laughs> word. <laughs> Mind you, like, wait, no, no, I had no, wait, 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 hold on, stop, 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 ah, god, 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 fuck. Okay, Something okay, like okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, here's something I don't. I, this star is blinky. Thanks for joining us. Is saying this. I don't know what this means. Side pocketing is always an interesting topic of conversation. Absolutely the strangest fetish I've heard of. Do you know what that is? No. Okay. <laughs> well, put it out there in chat room if anyone knows or SARS, define it and we'll get back to you on that one. Um, strange. Safe word Donald Trump. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, that's what I intriguing. think of when I don't want to get hard. <laughs> I'm just like, Donald Trump. Okay, I'm soft. <laughs> Super soft. Um, so it's not always overtly sexual, but it's always something that gives you some form of pleasure, releasing endorphins. So, I mean, I, sexual for for a fetish to be considered sexual, does it have to be involved? Does it have to be orgasm or sex overtly, or can it just be the the excitement and the experience of the fetish without the sexual component. Can it still be considered sexual if it's not overtly sexual? I feel like it can be, but like I, you know, that's, um, like I said in the beginning that the, the like black and white definition is, is something that you need in order to get off. But that, that definition comes from like 1930s psychology <laughs> where it was, um, it was abnormal or evil, you know, and somebody was, and it was called a perversion. Mm -hmm. So I think the reason that they've let up about like what we call a fetish, fetish is almost interchangeable with what turns you on. Mm -hmm. And, and even like to the point where you could say you have a food fetish and really just mean that you like cake and it doesn't <laughs> mean that you want to fuck a cake, you know? Yeah. So, so I think that it's, um, Language it's, is very malleable in that way. So I think that it's perfectly acceptable to say that you have a fetish for something and it's just a titillating thing that really does it for you. But you don't necessarily need it and it doesn't necessarily have to be overtly sexual. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I wanted to... Uh... Fuck. See, this happens to me from time to time where I forget what I was going to go for here. Um, I want, I don't want to give this definition. I don't think, ugh, this is gross. So urban, <laughs> urban dictionary says the side pocket is, <laughs> this is gross. A prostitute <laughs> with a col colostomy bag that can be removed to give male customers some side pocket. Oh, um, <laughs> that is so fucked That's up. why I don't know what it is. Yeah. Because bullshit. <laughs> good thing. <laughs> we don't fucking know. Um, oh, that's so fucking gross. Frank asks foot fetishes. What are your thoughts on foot fetishes? Do you have an opinion? Um, the foot fetish, first of all, foot fetish people, they are some of the best clients. And they're, they're some of the most passionate ones. Like people that are real foot fetishists are passionate about feet. Mm -hmm. And they have very specific things in, in the feet um, realm. There's uh, there's people that are into the arch, there's people that are into the wearing the heels. There's the dangle. If if you see a video where a woman crosses her legs and then lets the shoe slip off and kind of oh, dangle, yeah, that's super hot in the foot fetish world. <laughs> and, huh. and I I don't. That's one that I'm not. Um, like sure where that crystallization comes from like like smoking i can kind of figure out that that's very voyeuristic and you're kind of you can watch anybody do that and there's a little element of that with feet too 
where in the summertime when girls are wearing sandals, mm -hmm. if that does it for you, that's like free porn all over the place, you yeah. know? But the, there's all these little things. Oh, wrinkling of the soles of the feet, like curling the toes, and the way the ridges form on the bottom of the sole of the foot, that's a huge thing in the foot fetish world, too. And all those things are so... It's not just about, like, foot jobs, yeah. you know? There's people that are <laughs> into wow. chocolate, like, messy feet, like, pouring syrup and honey and chocolate on feet, like, is a thing. And I don't know, I think feet are very pretty, and I, and I like, notice people's feet a lot, but I'm, I wouldn't consider myself to be a fetishist yeah. about it. I'm not a foot snuggler or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you were describing the the dangling, like of like a heel or something, I think that's sexy. But I would never consider yeah. myself like a, like I wouldn't need to see that. You know, I just sort of you know if if a, a no, woman if on TV is doing it, like, I'm just that's like that's hot. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> UCI man. Um, what uh? Let's get into uh. Well, okay, you know what, before we get into uh, your personal experience here, I mean, I know we've touched on it a little bit. I want to show some of these uh, old school samples of fetish films. Uh, are I don't know about you. Are you a fan of Betty Page? Oh, of course I am. How could you not be? <laughs> so let's <laughs> see a little Betty Page here. So this is my first exposure to any type of uh, fetish at all, especially, obviously, you know, hair pulling and fighting and spanking and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I never really, I, I never like got into it. I, I guess I never connected with that. I just like the idea of naked girls, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> having a tickle fight like that. always, you know, did it for me. But for stuff like this, has, has your uh, taste evolved at all? Like, does this sort of old school way of uh, spanking, is there a difference between then and now? Um, well, with... Betty Page videos, there's a lot of, it's beautiful and visual, but it's not very, um, like, physical. You could tell that she's not really beaten on her, mm -hmm. you know? And and now, as far as spanking goes and bondage, it's, it's a lot more real than what you see in a Betty Page film. Yeah. So this is uh, one where it's just... Bad. Like those old underwear. I just, I can't find that sexy at all. <laughs> I don't know. Do, is, do you think, uh, is hot. do you think modern underwear is uh, more or less sexy than uh, old school underwear? You know what? I kind of like all of it. It depends on the mood. All of it has an aesthetic yeah. to it. So I, I like retro stuff. I mean, obviously retro underwear is almost like granny panties yeah but in context with the girls with the garters and everything like yeah it's kind of sexy the the garters and the hose i think is definitely sexy too um i want to show he, this one i i teased this to you because i thought the dude was so creepy and so i want to show the audience too <laughs> part of what i like about uh porn when i get to watch it is the the thing that throws you out of porn bad acting strange music or just fucking creeps in the back of the scene <laughs> like that's cut kind of, because the sex part is awesome and you know that, that's why you're tuning in but every once in a while you get like a weird experience when you're watching it i'm just some weird dude just walking across the fucking window i love that stuff um so stuff like this uh do you ever get asked to uh do any like wrestling or fighting or anything like that i haven't but I do have friends that produce that kind of film. Mm -hmm. I'm a little, um, I mean, it, I would do it if, if somebody requested a bigger girl. But a lot of times, these wrestling videos, they want, like, smaller girls. They want to see small, like, super sexy, tight bodies wrestling. Yeah. If they ever want, like, a heavy girl <laughs> to beat the shit out of a hot little girl, I'll totally do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with that, you know. Yeah. Like I explained to my my uh, one producer friend, I was like, I don't have a problem being bigger. Like I I don't have a like I have a problem with like oh, that fat pig, but I don't have a problem with like oh you fat pig, you know like that's <laughs> tone and intention. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 
Um, fucking Ben. Would it be inappropriate to use a rear naked chokehold? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Um, okay, so I want to segue here into your personal experience a little bit more, uh, how you got into it and stuff. But let's cue this up watching a little trailer that you sent for us. Is that all right? Absolutely. Okay, let's do that. Oh, no. yeah. I can't hear it. Yeah, the sound isn't going to come through on your end. It's just going to go to the audience. Okay, good. <laughs> So is there, is there ever uh, care taken not to show too much? Like that, that shot from behind where it's just uh, a little butt crack, a little sexy, um, but there's nothing more. Is that, is that in, important to the genre of spanking? Or is that just because that sometimes, was a trailer? Sometimes you want to tease it a little bit and sometimes it's, there's something very beautiful about a vagina from behind. So, you know, you don't always not want to show that. Sometimes, like, um, there's a there's an element of humiliation in spanking that's that could be important sometimes, depending on your mood. Obviously, that particular video is about going for that retro look, so it's a little more toned down. I beat her beat her ass. I do, but <laughs> like, but it's still a little more playful. And a little more silly, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a fun video. So, I want to do a whole series of retro -y videos. Yeah, I was going to say, this is an actual film that people can go uh, pay to see, right? Yes. Do you want to plug yes. that site really quick? Yeah, just go to HeidiNights.com and any of the videos on there will link directly to my clips for sale. And you can purchase them there. Okay. So let's talk about... Um, how you made that leap from uh, watching it or uh, experiencing it to actually performing it. Um, was that, how did that start? Was it hard for you? Not really. I, the funny thing is like ever since I found my first porno mag, I wanted to be in the sex industry and, uh, and it wasn't a pleasant porno mag. I think it was like a gallery or something. But, uh, and my dad had them under his sink. Oh, they had no. mold on them. <laughs> they were really old. <laughs> and, but there was articles by Marilyn Chambers in them wow. where she wrote about her sexual ex escapades, you know, and, and she was so freaking like empowered sexually and just fucking her way across America. <laughs> and, you know, of course, a lot of it's very contrived, but I didn't know that as a kid. And I was like, wow, this one just love sex and my dad was so repressed that he was like one of those like not letting his daughter wear tampons his daughter be me you know like that kind of repressed like very controlling sexually we were watching a nature program as snails were having sex he would blush and want to change the channel like he's just no very way. like you know a lot of sexual hang-ups so when i read these Marilyn chambers articles which i doubt my father ever read you know yeah. <laughs> um there's not articles was, in porno mags. <laughs> I was so intrigued by by her and the things that she wrote, the sexy fucking, and no shame about it, you know? Mm. Like, she just owned it. And honestly, before I ever had sex, one of the first things I, I thought that I wanted to do was move to Vegas and become a call girl. <laughs> now, mind you, I had no idea. I hadn't even had sex yet. <laughs> wow. Like, but I was like, wow, what an exciting life, you know? <laughs> and thank goodness I didn't do that because yeah. they would have been alive, you know? <laughs> but I I, um, I, never had, like, that kind of issue. So it was always something I, ooh, I'd love to do that, but never really thought that I could, mm -hmm. you know, or I was making babies or married at the time or, you know, stuff like that. But then um, it had to do with a combination of, uh, doing our podcast, we did hate speech radio, and then I did Naughty Bits for a while, which was like a sex talk show. And um, we had a there's something about rate talk radio and porn stars seem to go together. So we actually like met a lot of porn stars. We did like a cringe humor pl platform. So you want to bring 
porn stars in and have them do crazy things and you know and uh the then dave wanted to get into filming and uh, like since before i met him he wanted to produce porn yeah. and he was kind of down and i was like just you know that's what you should do then you should you just do that, you know? So he, he answered an ad, sort of an ad, like a tweet from a friend of ours and um, looking for like a temporary cameraman. And she kind of showed him the ropes. She was, she did like the, she was the, the cock and ball torture girl. Oh, wow. She did a lot of like, you know, like she used to peg guys and a lot of beating men up and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, so Dave filmed with her for a while, and then she asked if um, if I would be in silly. She needed another girl, and of course I was like, "Yeah, I'll totally do that," you know. And uh, she was kind of a negative Nancy. She was like, "Just you know, okay, are you sure you want to do this? Because as soon as you do this, you are now in porn. Yeah. So is there anything in your life that that will you know interfere with? Or and I'm like, honestly, no. Like I'm I don't. I, I'm a writer, <laughs> and I write for Penthouse Forum. Like I don't really, you know, like I don't have anything in my in my life that has a a uh, a clause in it that I can't do porn. Yeah. And I and I really I think that it's past. I'm past any chance of running for office. <laughs> There's something that used to keep. Like maybe I'll be president someday. I'm over that now. Yeah. So <laughs> I. I actually played the Dom in the video, and it was called Fifty Shades of Red because we we're both redheads, and that movie was very popular at the time. And uh, so I got a Dom, a an AVN award-winning Dom, <laughs> in my first video, <laughs> and it was like a feature length. And um, and I also we got nominated for I don't know why. But it got nominated by X Biz for best girl on girl scene. <laughs> which oh is, yeah. It's all it's all fetish. There's no, we we didn't do anything sexual in this video. I right. just beat her up. So, but I guess they wanted to put it somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> so it was nice that I got a nomination in my first film. Yeah. And um, I still like I'm I like to be honest because. It interests me when I run into some kind of issue, mm -hmm. like if I'm having a bad day or if I'm having like some kind of, like I'm feeling really self-conscious about this and I need to like work myself up to to shoot. Um, I I take an interest in that and there's a lot of people that are like really and they're surprised they're like why would you feel that way but uh, <laughs> you know it's because I'm fucking human you know <laughs> and yeah. and some days I'm not feeling super pretty and some days I'm not feeling like you know looking sexy and beating somebody up you know yeah and then like and i think it's important to acknowledge that and admit it i think that a lot of people don't when they're in this industry they're just always they have to always be on they're like oh i just love yeah. cock and i love this and you know but no sometimes i don't <laughs> yeah. you know yeah i don't ever love cock i mean that's not true no. i love my cock but <laughs> <laughs> I, outside I of the... <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so I think that's interesting because there is this sense out there that for those who are in the industry or performance artists, that this is a hundred percent who they are at all times. And it's an insane thought. Y y whatever yeah. job you have, you get tired of it. You know, you don't want to do it when you come home or, you know, whatever the job is, there's an, there's a, even if you love it, there's always going to be that element of work associated with it because you don't yeah. always feel like doing it. So yeah, it's insane to think, especially with something where I don't want to, I don't want to denigrate just hit sex, but it, it seems like because fetish is so much more ritualized, it's so much more um, uh, specific. I, I, I don't really know how, how to say it. Do you think it, in, it, it involves the performer more than traditional porn does no i don't think so um i think that those that the people that are in traditional porn like where they're having sex they're, mm -hmm. they're um especially especially now they, there's there's a lot less drugs involved 
You know, there's yeah. a lot more um, women who are their own producers, and there there's a lot more awareness during sex. It's not like people are popping a quaalude and just fucking on camera now. Yeah. There's there's a lot more orchestration. Oh, the good old days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and so you're giving over a piece of yourself, and and you. And it's probably one of the hardest jobs not to love what you're doing. Like, yeah. I think that if you're having sex on camera, you better be loving what you're doing. Like, it's, you know, because yeah. it's just, that's just torment then, you know. And I'm sure there are, no, I'm sure that, you know, the world isn't perfect and there are people who are still doing it that aren't, like, all, like, yay, cock, or whatever. But for the most part, most of the girls that I know are incredibly intelligent and like these vivacious glowing people who truly love cock <laughs> like have <laughs> sex on their off days you know <laughs> like they're they're not like all tired of it or you know but um with fetish it's almost like how um like when the difference between being a stand-up comic and being a musician like, a stand-up wow. comic is up there, and there's very little between you and the people. But a musician is, like, has an instrument or some vehicle other than just their own, his own words, you know, like, to, to between him and the audience. And I think mm -hmm. that, like, when you're having sex, there's a lot less between you and the viewer or the camera than there is when you're doing a fetish film and you have instruments and implements and you know some rig and you get to hang somebody up from the ceiling or whatever you're doing yeah. you know there's there's a device between you and the camera it gives you a little bit of, of room you know nice so in those times where you may have a scheduled shoot but you're not feeling particularly beautiful you're not feeling particularly into it at this moment or sexual uh do you just say, you know, it's not happening, or do you work through it? If you work through it, how do you do that? What are your mechanisms? There has been times, much to my husband's chagrin, <laughs> that I have been like, I'm not doing it. I'm calling it off! <laughs> yeah, it's not happening today. This is not happening. But um, the days when I did work through it, it's just like the... It's like your parents when they're taking you to somewhere where you don't want to go, and they're mm -hmm. like, come on, once you get there, it'll be fun. That's pretty much all it is. Like, once it starts, it's fun. You know, it's I get to dress up and and be sexy and weird and you know, do something very nichey. Yeah. And I get to say shit. I get to talk shit to people, which is one of my <laughs> funnest things. <laughs> so, I think that um, yeah. If the days when it when it's not happening, it's a serious not happening because I'm very aware that once it gets rolling, I'm probably gonna be okay. Yeah. But the days when I when I'm like thinking this is not gonna ever get rolling, this is gonna end in tears, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I'm just not in that place today, you know. That's what I have to be like. I just it's not. I can't do it, you know. Yeah. So are you always uh, when you perform? Are you always uh, the the one in control and spanking, or are you ever on the receiving end? I am occasionally. It's very rare that I'm on the receiving end because I'm just more comfortable in front of the camera mm. being the dom. There is like a, there's one foot fetish, like a foot worship thing I did where the girl that we were shooting with was just so, so like the statuesque woman. And I was like, it just seems weird to me that she would be the one worshiping my feet. You know, because she just looked very grand that day. You know, she's very tall and blonde, very Nordic looking and tattooed up. And I just was like, you know what? I feel like I should be the sub this time. <laughs> but then, like, we the same day we, we filmed me spanking her, too, you know? Oh, but it was go. just like how I felt about the foot fetish. Thing. I, was just, I just feel like aesthetically it would be better if I was the bottom in that video. And then there's a, there's a couple of videos of Dave spanking me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Is That's it, about it is it hard to um, is it hard to perform a specific fetish if you're not particularly into it like the foot one for example well when I'm doing it I'm into it like I, I it's weird it's not something that I fantasize about 
like foot fetish stuff specifically. Yeah. But when you're doing a scene, it's it becomes very real, and it just is sexy. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like I wouldn't be able to get into just like doing shit porn. That's never gonna be sexy, you know. But like, but doing <laughs> doing something like like foot fet, foot worship. <laughs> Yeah. Where you're with somebody else who, and you're playing off of each other, and that person's really turned on, and and you're really turned on. You're literally sucking somebody's toes, and they're like over the moon about it, and it's very genuine and very sexy. It's gonna turn you on, you know. Yeah. Even like even if you didn't like feet, if your wife wanted her toes sucked and she just was like whoa and started almost orgasming when you sucked her toe, you'd be like, damn, yeah, I'm gonna oh, suck yeah. some toes. No, you know? that's, that's absolutely true. I mean, I, I actually, when I was uh, in high school, I tried uh, sucking on my girlfriend's toe because it was just something through the grapevine I heard was a sexy thing in high school. And uh, <laughs> it, it didn't go so well. She didn't really dig it. And so that sort of ended the career for me. But it was, you know, for you could tell she was trying to enjoy it. I was trying to enjoy it because I was thinking that she was enjoying it. And so you do sort of feed off of each other in that way. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting callback to an early part of the conversation that we were having about communication. You know, we were talking about, mm-hmm. you know, there should be like a simmer down word and not just a, a, a safe word. Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest problems with uh, couples and sex is the lack of communication and I don't, do, do you, where do you think that stems from? Insecurity. Yeah. And um, also a lot of ego, you know, like the, it's kind of like how um, one of the biggest issues with communication is oral sex mm-hmm. with women in particular. I've never had a problem with men being like, ah, you're not doing it right because you got a mouth on your dick. You guys are pretty happy. <laughs> but like directing a man to perform oral sex can be difficult if Mm. they let their egos get in the way, you know, a little bruised ego over just, can you move a little to the right? You know, like some men can't take a lot of direction and yeah. Cause it's like your right or my right, which right is it? (laughs) Are are you telling me how to drive? I don't like this. (laughs) (laughs) Like a bat backseat cunnilingus. (laughs) (laughs) I told you not to do this to me. (laughs) Yeah. So it's, it, it kind of reminds me of that, like, um, the, uh, the fear of bruising somebody's ego or the fear that somebody's going to stop mm-hmm. because you give them some instruction or, or tell them, oh, I like it this way instead of this way, or I don't like that. Like some, it should, it should be okay to be like, no, nah, I don't like that, you know, without yeah. it shutting everything down. And, and I'm not saying it's all the man's fault. I'm just, you know, like that seems to be. In my experience, what the problem is that that you didn't kind of let it be okay to 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 explore things verbally. You mm-hmm. know, you want to explore things physically and have this experience together, but you don't want to like you're not comfortable with the after chat or or talking about it during. You know, yeah. so yeah, and I think there's a healthy balance between having like full blown conversations in the middle of sex so that it pulls you out of it but you know guiding them with your voice or with even your hands or maybe your thighs or whatever it is i think that's incredibly important and the worst part is is um traditionally the older people get the more comfortable they are sexually you don't Mm want to be in any form of a relationship for any length of time and then suddenly start (laughs) because then they're gonna be like yeah for all these years you've been hating everything I've been doing? Like, I thought I was doing it right. And they're like, that was my asshole, not my clitoris. I just didn't want to tell you. Oh, God. It's way off, but I'm just saying, you know. I so. just, I think it's important to to have those, you know what would be fun to try conversations. Yeah. Which we kind of skip over and, and we, like a lot of times you think you're going to try something new and you're just going to throw it in the mix. And see yeah, surprise what them out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, sometimes there's uh, th- this is kind of an odd thing, but I remember when I was in high school, the person who became my first husband, for some reason, 
I wanted to lick his eyeball. I don't know why. It just like popped, and, and I know it's weird, right? I've never had the inkling neck again ever. Yeah. Like, but for some reason, it was like we were teenagers and full of hormones, and like just like couldn't get close enough to each other, you know. And I was like, I just want to do something weird, and yeah. and I, this is sort of advanced for like a teenager, but I literally talked to him about it, like you know, I want to try to lick your eyeball, and he let me. It was interesting. Wow. <laughs> What does an eyeball and, feel like on your tongue? Like kind of like a, a salty marble. Really? Salty? Yeah. I would yeah, never sperm. Have that. Like it's, a gigantic you know. sperm. <laughs> Hang on, motorcycle. Yeah. Sorry. Wow. Yeah, it was kind of like a salty a salty uh, marble. I didn't. It's not like I really laughed at it or anything. I just right. kind of. <laughs> You're like, ah. <laughs> and I rolled around in my mouth. Or... <laughs> He's like, come on, stop, please. Uh, no, I actually read an article uh, out of Japan or I don't know, some some Asian yeah. Far East country. It, it was like a thing for a while. And, and I guess they were transmitting diseases or something because of it. Or, yeah, it's know. not good. Weird. I think it's a little weird that you could, because uh, it's all connected. Eye, your nose and throat, you know. Yeah. Like, it's weird that you can lick an eyeball and get something when you just make it out with your mouth anyway, but that's probably what yeah. they said before they got conjunctivitis or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Okay. I've been uh, holding this question here, trying to stop the chat from moving because I wanted to get to it. Zoth is asking, do you think a film can be considered a fetish film, even though it was not intentionally intended to be one? Um, an example is Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS, which sounds like a fucking cool-ass movie. Uh, what do you think? Well, first of all, I feel like Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS was intended to be a fetish film. Oh, right. <laughs> the name alone, but... <laughs> there was just something, you know, there was some intention there, I think. That's just my <laughs> personal opinion. But absolutely, you can fetishize a film that wasn't intended to be a fetish film, like... Hellraiser 2 kind of turns me on. <laughs> is you it know? the bed? It's like not... when she's coming back or what is it? Or her putting it... on the suit with all the... This is my part of it is the, the suit. Women, like naked women in loose men's clothing does it for me. I think that's super sexy. So when she was like in that jacket, oh. all bloody and stuff. Wow. Like the first... I don't know. I don't understand it. It's it's. I mean, it's all kind of overtly sexual anyway. The Hellraiser movies, you know, oh. the whole... Like, oh, the pain, blah, 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 you know? It's all very bdsm -y. So I guess it's supposed to be sexual, but it wasn't intended to be a fetish film, yeah. you know? But there are people that totally fetishize that film. I'd probably yeah. think of something better than that, something that's really super not... Um, oh. Like Full House. <laughs> <laughs> not a film, but... <laughs> Dear God, no. <laughs> What Just trying to think there? of the most mundane thing that could then be turned into, um, yeah, I don't know. I can't really think of anything. You know what is really, okay, here's a good one, and still it is The Piano. Do you remember the movie The Piano? Yeah, Harvey Keitel? Yeah. There is a lot of, like, fetishy subdom elements in that film, like binding with the corsets and... You know, anything involving corsets that isn't intended to be fetishy, like, like uh, Gone with the Wind when she's being corseted up by her mammy is, you know, sexy. And I could yeah. totally see fetishizing that, even though that wasn't the original intention of the film. Or was so, it? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course it's That's really what sexy. the Civil War was all about. <laughs> Fetish porn with <laughs> corsets. Uh, and the help. <laughs> we'll politely call them the help. Um... Shits in the pie, you know. That, that's hot to somebody. <laughs> Germans love fetish. <laughs> the help. It's the German fetish. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the film, the help. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, no, no, <laughs> no. I saw um uh uh Night of the Demons, I think it was, where this uh, cheerleader like takes lipstick because she's you know, like possessed by a devil or something like uh -huh. messily puts it all over her face and then like down to her chest and literally like pushes it into her nipple and as a i don't know circa 15 year old adam that was the sexiest thing i'd ever seen in my life it was gross <laughs> and messy 
but it was so goddamn sexy to me. Weird, but cool. You know what group does that a lot is gay men. Gay there men you go. will watch. <laughs> no, not lipstick. I mean, as far as turning films into like a kind of a fetish turn on yeah. thing that weren't intended to. Um, Logo used to play a lot of films that were just like frat house films. Like, that were just supposed to be about college. Yeah. There was one really stupid horror film about a haunted college. and But it was total, like, the guys were so hot in it. They would show it on Logo. It was like a subversively gay, yeah. you know, or homoerotic in a way. So. <laughs> so I want to, um, we're getting close to our time limit that I usually set aside. Do you want to, can you hang around for a little bit longer? Sure. Okay, because I wanted to talk about some, uh, some of the troubles in the industry. Um, I don't know if uh, it, it goes across the board, um, but uh, age, body type, um, how is that, how is that uh, influenced with uh, the fetish industry? Is, is it as um, stereotyped as traditional porn or society at large? Well, I think because there are fetishes specifically for specific body types that um, there's a genre for every type, mm -hmm. you know? So if you are really okay with you and what you do turns somebody else on, then it's not a problem, you know? If you're outside of that bubble, if you're a BBW, you know, and you just try to do straight porn, then that would be an issue, you know, unless somebody wants to see a BBW get fucked. That's, you know, but as far as fetish goes, like the, when I went to, um, the x uh, or whatever it was, like the, the porn, uh, um, conference, not conference, you know, the expo, whatever. Yeah. It, um, the BBWs were just con, you couldn't get near them. They were just flooded. They, they were so big. Like, two of them laid on the floor and did, like, this faux 69 thing. And you had to really walk around them. Like, they were very big girls. And they were the most popular. Like, people were just fascinated with these women. And so they found their element. No matter what you look like, yeah. there is somebody out there who's really into that look, you know? And and it does, you could be an old grandma that, like, takes her teeth out and does blowjobs and there's somebody who is willing to pay for that shit you know yeah there's there's whole channels on on um clips for sale that are dedicated to just people eating I mean, it's just fat girls who sit down in front of a camera and eat and people buy it what you know so it's not i don't think it's as much of an issue like it in traditional porn like you, you want bodies that look fantastic, fucking, yeah. and and traditionally, in a traditional sense, like they're just like ideal bodies, and they're fucking, and they look fantastic doing it, and that's just what that is. That's just you know, and I don't see that as a problem. Hmm. I'm not interested in being in that kind of porn, and I don't have the body for it, so you know, no big deal. <laughs> but like, it's, uh, I mean, I guess it's. The, the biggest problem that I see or the biggest issue that I see is is um, tattooed versus not tattooed. Yeah. Like they like regular porn doesn't like to use tattooed girls. And I think it should be a non issue whether you have tattoos or not, you know? Yeah. Like I, so <clears> the <throat> tat being tattooed itself has become its own genre of porn. Huh. I would have thought it would it's just so pervasive now that you couldn't avoid it. But that's yeah, you would think. But if you if you're very if you're tatted up, then you generally can't get into like like a penthouse or that you know sort of thing. Like they don't they don't I want never that. Really thought about that, huh? That's interesting. Yeah. Um, and is age the same? No, I think that there's definitely an age limit on on basic on on traditional porn. It's weird to say traditional porn, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, it really lets you know how far off we are from that talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like your basic porn, you want 
you want the gorgeous, you want the perfect age, you you know. And uh, once you hit, it's getting older and older. A lot of a lot of women who have done porn their whole lives, they start to produce when they get into their thirties and forties, you know. Hmm. But if you are still doing porn where you're, and and some of them can go well into their forties and still be fucking wow. and look hot, you know. But a lot of then you're gonna your your uh, labels get changed now you're doing milf porn you know oh, yeah. so it's um it's not as bad as hollywood where you are not fuckable anymore mm -hmm. at a certain age and it's much lower for women than men you know and and it's odd that it's worse in that genre because you're not fuckable but you're not even fucking on <laughs> camera you're just acting so you know that's that's kind of that's more of a I think a uh, a travesty than than in porn. I think when you're doing porn and and you're doing you're shooting a film that's about hot people fucking, then they should be hot people fucking. And if you want to shoot a porn about old people fucking, then they should be old people fucking. You know, <laughs> like so. I I don't really have a problem with that. You know, that's porn is like the last bastion of free speech and expression. <laughs> And it, there shouldn't be like, when I worked in the porn shop, we had a, um, like this, we had sections for specific races, you know, like we had an Asian section and a Latino section. And for some reason, the black section was called biracial, which I thought was weird. Why can't it be the black section? Yeah, they can't just you know? say <laughs> black section. <laughs> it, it clearly was the black section, <laughs> but they didn't call it the black section. And, uh, yeah, so so, uh, and that's really, you can't go anywhere else and, and you can't like, you know, I want the black section. Like, that's <laughs> <working. laughs> I want Asians. I would like number. Asians. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You can't order up by, by race <laughs> in any other uh, medium, really, as you can, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's another thing. I, I, I always, uh. I don't know. Maybe I just enjoy the punishment of it, but I always like to feel really stupid and go to a porn site and have no idea about a tenth of the categories, like just the the names of them that they spell them. Yeah. Out. I'm just like, what the fuck is that? And I click. I was like, ah, oh, fuck! I didn't want to see that. You know. So what the fuck is that? Is a dangerous game. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I've been burnt before <laughs> in the chat room just before I was burnt by that <laughs> fucking colostomy bag. Ugh. Um, what, okay, so Lolly's asking, what's, uh, god damn it, people, stop talking! What's an older woman called that isn't a mother? Inquiring minds want to know. They still call it MILF porn. Yeah. Um, Lisa Ann, the, the girl who played, uh, <clears throat> uh, what's that dumb Republican chick from Alaska, what's her name? Oh, Palin, yeah. Yeah, she did the Nail and Palin series for yeah. Hustler. Yeah, And, um, she was even she was uh starting to be classified as milf and without so you don't have to be a mom it's just an age thing yeah you know so here's something that i've never figured out what's the we're straying a little bit i'm gonna get back on track here what's the difference between milf and cougar a cougar is an older woman who is attracted to younger men and is generally the uh the pursuer and the dominant okay. person in that relationship. A MILF is a hot older woman. <laughs> yeah. They, so the young guys are trying to fuck. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, no other questions. Let me go to my questions then. So um, I want to go back to uh, you working with David. Um, what are some of the challenges that you've experienced uh, working with your, your, you know, your significant other. We don't have any challenges that you would probably like, ex that one would expect. Like, there's no jealousy issues or anything like that. Um, on the contrary, David would be thrilled if I wanted to do blowjob porn. Like, he'd be like, yeah, cha-ching. Like, he'd just, no problem with that. Like, and uh, it's mostly, um, we both have tremendous egos. Hmm. And and I have a hard time 
letting him be in charge of a shoot because he gets to be a bossy McBosserson and I get pissed <laughs> off. You know? <laughs> like, our biggest problem is him getting really anal about lighting and me being like, can we please just shoot this already? You know, or, or cutting it when I'm really into like what I'm doing. Mm. You know, I'm really into spanking somebody and he yells cut and I'm like, ah, it's like really pulling on the brakes. Or, um, I don't know what he would say his biggest issue is with me. Probably getting mad at him for being in charge. <laughs> and um, Stop it, Bossy McBosserton! <laughs> <laughs> like, I lose track of time. Like, he'll say, okay, well, I, now I want you to spank her for about two minutes and then switch to a paddle and do that for another minute. And I just, like, like, like I'm going to be, I don't even know how to time. Out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, like, in the zone. I'm doing my thing. You know, so... So, Maybe you're like, uh, you know, you're a comedian, so they got to do the comedian thing with the lights. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to light me at two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, switch, switch, switch. I, is, here's something I've always wondered about. Because I, um, professionally, I do videos for cities and clients and stuff. Um, and there's a tremendous amount of uh, reshoots that happen Um is, is there any of that with what you guys do? It, I mean, do you have to get right back in the middle of a scene in order to reshoot it to cut it together? Or is it just much more freeform, simpler? Well, we, um, as far, we can't really do like a, a callback and do a reshoot because a lot of girls travel from other states. So if we're, if we're shooting with another model, then, then a reshoot, like, do you mean another take? Yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. Do, we do other takes like, like usually if, for if he's put oh. if he's put a, a, a the film together well he's in the production process of putting the film together and he realizes that there's just a chunk missing um uh, so you have to go back and reshoot or does he just say you know what that's it we're just we're, we're just you gonna can't cut. there's it's almost impossible to to reshoot yeah. because uh like i said the girls come from other states and we wouldn't be able to get them back into the studio to reshoot with them so most of the time you have to get everything that you're gonna get mm -hmm. in in one shoot you know yeah uh just really quick ma says he's on the subway can't really watch live but it's great to see us oh. um I... so i i wanted to uh pursue that um doing a take again because you get into it uh the bossy mcbosserson director is telling you all right you've got to switch to paddle you got to stop doing what you're doing do this yeah. you go through the process and he's like okay let's do that again is there any problem getting back into that place um i don't really have a problem like it's jarring sometimes and i would prefer to just do a straight through shoot like i've mm. been begging him to just set up two cameras and just let me have at it yeah because I just think it's more organic that way and he can figure it out afterwards. Yeah, he'll fix it in cameras. post. <laughs> but yeah, but um, it's it's pretty easy to get back into. The thing that I, I often worry about is if I'm with somebody who's not really, like they're into spanking, but they're more like just doing the shoot and it's somebody that I can't even really, really mark up because a lot of girls do all different kinds of shoots. So sometimes you can't mark them up or they won't be able to work for a mm. while if you bruise them or whatever. And, um, and he's like, okay, start it from the top. And you're counting down like so many, like, you, you know, that's got to suck. Like, and he's like, I'm almost at 20. And he's like, okay, start from 10 and, you know, do it again. And, you know, but I, I never got a complaint from anyone, but I've often felt bad, like, oh, sorry, I got to. Beat you more. <laughs> We're doing another twenty yeah. licks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would imagine just the the sight of the ass would be a problem to do reshoots, right? I mean, to do the scene again. Oh yeah, because it would well, be bruised you know, the first time, right? You know what? Butts lo they lose the red color really, really quickly. Like huh. it's surprisingly quick. There was even one of the times that I it was one of my days I didn't feel like shooting. Mm -hmm. And Dave couldn't cancel, so he just did the shoot with the girl. And in between, like, he did a spanking film with her. It's on the site. I forget who it's with, but she's really cute. And um, she's, like, another tall blonde girl. And 
when Dave would have to get up and fix the camera, mm -hmm. she would like keep spanking herself to keep her butt red. <laughs> <laughs> because your butt loses color very easily. So you can, um, if you don't do like a real heavy spanking shoot where you're bruising somebody yeah. and you're just reddening them up, you could actually get a couple shoots in in a day because the butt is very resilient that way. Huh. As long as you're not doing like a bruising beating, you know? Yeah. yeah. What's the casting like? What's like the perfect butt to go for when you're casting for someone to, to spank? Well, you want kind of a bubbly butt, you know? You want mm -hmm. something that's a little bouncy. and uh, You don't want a church like, girl's please. bench ass? Huh? You don't want a church girl's ass? Like a pew? <laughs> you want something with a little pop, you know? like uh, Bounce a quarter I've off. Had a, I've had a couple of really thin people, and, and their butt just doesn't, like, have that, have that bounciness to it. Yeah. You want, like, a black girl butt. You know, oh, black yeah. girl butts perfect. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Oh, something about Adam. <laughs> black girl butt. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, what's you, what's your? Do you have a plan for you know long term career for this? I would really like to um, start hosting parties and doing more meet and greet kind of stuff in the future but as far as like I and also I would really love to do another feature film that we produce ourselves because you you can't um submit to the awards like xbiz and avn unless it's I think it has to be on video oh, yeah. like physically and like VHS like, yeah well, or, or you know DVD. Yeah. <laughs> And and uh, I know I made a VHS like square thing, yeah. but you know DVD. <laughs> and and uh, it's I think it has to be with a distributor. So it has to be uh -huh. distributed by a distributor in a physical format in order to be eligible to be um, um, up for any awards. So I'd like to do things that I could actually submit to AVN or XBiz mm -hmm. and. Um, and I'd like to, I'd, I'd be happy if I could just do it enough to make it like a little money on the side and um, have, like, I think Dave would be more interested in doing, like, regular porn, you know, and get away from fetish eventually. Yeah. So I'd like to move into a more producer area for that. You know, like women my age are supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to suck any cock. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't mind beating asses, <laughs> look at occasional feet, but I don't want to suck cock. Yeah, I can't blame you. <laughs> I can't blame you. I figured you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, you know, um, I don't know where I was going. <laughs> I do want to thank you very much for coming on the show and being so candid and open with the conversation. Uh, and, uh, illuminating the rest of us who uh, are a little ignorant to this fetish world out there. Yes, that is my goal, to crush ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> With the heel, <laughs> just like a testicle. With the heel of my stiletto, I crush your <laughs> ignorant balls. <laughs> that sounds like, so oh, gosh, that sounds funny. That's like, uh, I could imagine Gargamel saying <laughs> or something. That is from so the strange. Smurfs or something. Okay. That's how he my doesn't mind even works. Work. That's just weird, Adam. <laughs> yeah, that's where it goes. Um, let's. How about you give the good folks watching uh, uh, where they can, you know, shout out your website, where they can find you socially, you know, where they can find you online. All right. The um, the spelling of Heidi Knights is H E I D E E N Y T E S, and I am at HeidiKnights.com. I'm Heidi Knights on Twitter. I'm Heidi Knights on Facebook. Uh, Heidi Knights on Tumblr. All over the interwebs. You uh -huh. should at this point be able to Google Heidi Knights. <laughs> yeah. But just go to HeidiKnights.com. It's kind of like a hub for everything. And it's also, I've got links to a lot of our model sites on there. And um, 
like our affiliate sites, and you can find links to all of my videos that are for sale on Clips for Sale. Oh, yeah. If you want to talk to me, you can email me at HeidiKnights at Yahoo.com. Cool. Well, thank you very much for joining me again. You look fantastic. Uh, I'm just uh, always impressed whenever I get a talk with you. Thank you. You look fantastic, too, and your opening thank segment you. is hot as fuck. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate You're that. Welcome. <laughs> After seeing it so many times, I feel really dumb about it, but... You know, I get powerful. giggles every time I see it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Let me give a quick shout out to everyone that joined us live. I really do appreciate it. You guys are what make this particular format worthwhile and meaningful, not only to me as the producer and host, but to the guests and the interaction and the questions. It, it really, it means a lot. So I really do genuinely want to thank you for that. But that's not the only thing I'm going to ask of you. No, no, no. I want you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. I want you to sign up to the email list so you're informed on every upcoming show so you're never going to be complaining about tuning in late. Subscribe to the email. Let's see what else. Uh, you can leave a rating or review for the channel as well. Just go to reverendcampbell.com or just look at the description of the video right below what you're looking at right now. All the information is right there. Click through. Hook a brother up. That's all I ask. So, uh, Heidi Knights, until we can speak of the devil again, hail Satan. Hail Satan.